Good morning, good morning. How are you? What a lovely day. Low grey cloud. All together now. Good for photography. I'm on my way to work. We've come the slow way. I've got, uh, you'll hear a few rattles in the back because I've got some exciting stuff in the back. Unfortunately, the technician that works next to me has decided to leave the dental profession. He's a prosthetic, uh, you know, chromes and dentures technician. And he's decided to uh, get a job working for Border Force because here in Kent, we're within commuting distance of France. And that's where a lot of the new border force agents are, um, are going to be working. So he's got a job on the basis that he sort of knows someone who's already working over there. He said that, you know, there's a, I'll make sure you get a decent job over here if, um, if that's what you want. So I don't know whether he'll get fed up of going across the channel every day, twice. He might do. I do see that there'll be some restrictions on his duty free, but the point is that you know the guy who does all my uh, ads and repairs, and that is um, going to disappear. So it's going to severely curtail my ability to uh, service the uh, anyone who needs dentures. So long story short, we're going to have to start thinking about uh, uh, doing ads and repairs on site. Um, which is again because we're sort of quite far-sighted and uh, anticipated needing a lab. We've actually already put a lab in about a year ago. Uh, not that we process dentures on it or anything, but uh, it can certainly be adapted to do ads and repairs. So um, that's a bit of a turn up, but then uh, what's happened is he had two grinding machines and one of them was the wet one, which I prefer, and the other one was a dry one, which I don't like because I think it makes the whole place dusty. And um, he told me I could have the wet one because it wasn't really working all that well. And so we spent the last two days stripping it down, me and Lou. And uh, We've got it working, you know. I mean, it's only a case of taking it apart and chipping a bit of plaster off the inside and uh, freeing up some water spray holes and stuff like that. And uh, blow me, it's good as new. So I'm very happy with that. So um, the only problem is obviously it makes a mess. Uh, you get a lot of a uh, very milk white water out of it and uh, that has to go down the drain. But I don't think, again, that's not a problem, I don't think, because it's all um, solid, isn't it, by that, that point. It's the um, people who just wash out the, who mix the plaster and then wash out the wet plaster in the plaster bowls and wash that down the sink, that's, that's the main problem because that hasn't set. And so, of course, it sets, doesn't it? It sets where, it, where it's fallen and so you can block the sink up like that. But we're still gonna work on some kind of sink trap. So, yeah, and it's quite nice, you know, when you've got a little lab there and a Dremel and everything, if you're taking screws and bolts and stuff apart, to be able to get the brush on them from the Dremel and, and sort of really clean them up. So we put the thing back together in quite a nice state, you know. But um, we've had to do some moving round of the kitchen and uh, uh, bring in some mains leads and stuff like that and uh, I've got a measuring thing here for measuring the diameter of pipes and tubes and things but um, anyway the um, you know I mean we all know that a lot of technicians have gone out of the profession and uh, there was for example there was a ceramic technician working next to me in the same place um, and we tried him you know and we tried and tried and tried and it was still it still wasn't working and he uh, gave up doing crown and bridge and guess where he's gone well he went to work on the big uh, encampment that we're going to be driving past in a minute uh, that was a covid drive-through testing center 
but I think he's now been seconded down to the immigration centre that's uh, just uh, to the north west of Manston so he's quite happily uh, you know, sucking on the public tea as, as will everybody soon you know we just had the budget yesterday um, it's nobody's nobody's listening really for what the Chancellor's going to do to I mean, it's not all about it's not about tax allowances so much it's still a bit about tax allowances but it's more about where the Chancellor's going to put your money you know where he's going to who's going to get 100 million for you 100 million for you and yes 100 million for you you know everybody uh, is more interested in what they're going to get out of the public purse now than uh, what they might have to put in some other magic person puts the money in and they just uh, try and get as much out as they can so corporation tax is going up from the fairly uncompetitive 19 percent to the extremely uncompetitive 25 percent we don't care if you invest here or not rate um, i think that's more a case of farming the businesses which are here rather than trying to attract investment although they they do say that it's you know they're trying to attract inward investment but then having said that all chancellors have always said that they want to attract inward investment uh, but whether or not they can walk the walk you know is, is a different matter entirely i mean we're sitting on the uh edges of you know we're sitting we're sitting near other jurisdictions that have much lower tax rates uh, ireland uh, at the moment we're 12 and a half percent and want to keep 12 and a half percent but have been forced uh, by the United States basically to increase that to 15% for any large corporation, uh, anything with a turnover of over $750 million a year or something. So, you know, you're talking about your Nescafes, your Pfizer's, your, uh, your, your Meta Facebooks and all Googles and all that. So that they can then say that, you know, we that we can all compete on the basis that when none of them is going to be compete below 15 percent uh, we are at 19 percent we have got no intention of competing at the 15 percent level we've put ours up to 25 just in case you're watching this and thinking of investing any sort of decent money in the uk uh you know carry on your research that's all i would say make sure you get the best deal for your company because it's not likely to be here um as far as what's what was in the budget for dentists, well, can I? Can I? No, I'm not going to. Junction of death. I mean, um, you know, I'll, I'll be paying more corporation tax. That's true. To the extent that I pay any tax at all. Oh come on! After these two, I might be all right. Yeah, one, two. So um, that's going to be on my profits, you know, the, uh, in the year ending, probably next year. Next, uh, 1st of October is the, my first day of my financial year. I'm still waiting for my accounts to the 30th of September last year. But uh, the guy who said he was going to do them, when I have asked him, sent him an email saying, where are they? He um, sent me back a pro forma uh, email saying, uh, we're, um, uh, I've left the company. Left the comp that's how bad my accounts were. He actually left UNW, the company. Which I think I might be doing soon. Because they're, um, you know, they're not exactly a good fit, I don't think, for my, my tiny, tiny, tiny little firm. Massive, great company. They've got 6,000 is their phone number. They've got the, the uh, area code and then 6,000. So they're one of let's say probably six or seven or eight companies that have got you know paid enough to get a, a, a switchboard number which is something 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 six thousand so that's how much money they're making you know meanwhile i'm on uh, voice over internet uh, struggling to pay 16 pounds a month for my phone bill that's the whole phone bill so i think you have to comes back to what I was saying about shows of ostentatious wealth. I mean, a 6,000 number is a prestigious number, isn't it? Uh, and if I was, uh, you know, 
a large company, if I was Facebook or Meta or something, and I was looking for an accountant, then I would probably that would probably go in their favour. But if I'm a tiny, tiny little company, I think that actually works against you in the same way as a dentist driving a Ferrari. I don't think they understand that. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to be paying 25%, which, you know, again, it's not, it's not the end of the world, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, I, I, I got, you know, anything from nothing to 20,000 could be my tax bill. I'm just, I brace myself every year for what it might be. I've got no idea what it might be. If I buy something now, I can get 130% of the cost taken off my profit, not off my tax bill, let's make that quite clear. So suppose now I buy a £100,000 scanner, I can get £100,000 taken off of my profit. And I'll get 30% extra, 30, another 30,000 taken off my profit. So I'll end up not paying tax on 130,000 pounds worth of my profit. And the new regime is that you don't get the extra 30%, but you get it in the same year because that 130 you have to be split over three years, I think. Whereas now you get, you get only the amount, the 100,000, but you can take it all in year one. So that what they're trying to do is they're trying to just bring uh, capital expenditure forward, aren't they? They're desperate. They're saying, look, you know, we don't care uh, what you buy. We won't tax you for the money that you earn to buy it. Um, I've never really understood that because, I mean, basically, if you buy something for £100,000, then, then it's not profit anyway is it because it's an expense you've had to buy it so anyway this is why me and accountants don't get on but um they're like yeah you know we don't care what you buy as long as you do it this week <laughs> it's a, don't you know we've got an election coming up probably at the end of next year we need something quick <laughs> we can't we're not going to give you a tax allowance that's going to extend into the first two years of the new labor government we're going to get, we want it now. <coughs> anyway. I'm not going to be buying anything. Not old angry, not old tighty. I don't uh, intend to uh, play the Chancellor's game. So, let's have a thing. What else is going on? Yeah, so from a dental point of view, really, that's all that's, you know, I mean, there's a ton in there about childcare and uh, the doctors, they got themselves into a right state with the doctors. You know, the American Constitution talks about freedom, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, that doesn't include health, and it doesn't include education. But... The government takes it upon itself to try and provide, be, be, be the main treatment provider and hashes it up terribly. And uh, let's um, talk about the Health Select Committee very briefly because I put evidence into the Health Select Committee. It's been entered into evidence. Now the good thing about evidence to the Health Select Committee is it's protected by parliamentary privilege. Because in the same way that uh, MPs are allowed to speak freely in the chamber, because uh, without getting, without fear of being sued for, uh, well, I presume, I don't know if it's in hindsight, it might be libel, but it could be slander, but it's probably libel. Um, it's because they want the truth, so they've said that they're exempt from being sued, you know, for what they say. And so, so a lot of things have been, and they, they do use this privilege, parliamentary privilege, to name some pretty horrible people and say some things that need to be said, but that can't be said because 
um, if, it, if they were sent, you know, in the public domain by the Daily Mail, for example, the Daily Mail will get sued. Uh, but um, if it's sent in, in the comments chamber, then then it can't be can't be sued. And I hope I'm right about this. I think I am. Uh, when you give evidence to a House of Commons Select Committee, whether it's uh, uh, appearing in person. Uh, for oral evidence or written evidence, it's again it's covered by parliamentary privilege, because <coughs> you're, they want to get to the truth. They want to get to the bottom of things. They don't want people to say, "Well, here's my evidence, but it's been heavily redacted by my lawyer because we're for fear of being sued for libel." And I don't mean that it's inaccurate. I mean that it's accurate, but you will still get sued for libel because the way this thing works is that. <coughs> That's where the COVID camp was over there. Pardon my coughing. The way this thing works is that people with a lot of money, more money than you, will just issue proceedings. And they will, you know, and they win both ways because if you don't get legal uh, representation, then they transfer the floor with you. And if they, if you do get legal representation, then you go bankrupt. Either way, the uh, best part of two years is um... <coughs> oh, the, but you know your life is consumed by this legal battle and, and the worry that comes along with it. Even though you know you're innocent, uh, it doesn't stop them uh, taking you. People's taking you to court, and there's plenty of um, innocent people that committed suicide or went bankrupt as a result of, of being, uh, you know, the legal profession. So, <clears throat> so anyway, I put in everything and everything is true to the best of my knowledge. And you can read it on the Health, uh, House of Commons Health Select Committee website. Um, But the problem is it's not easy. If you search for Derek Watson, D-E-R-E-K, then you'll find it. But if you um, if you want to read most of the evidence, then uh, it's, it's very difficult to download because you have like five clicks to download one piece of evidence. And I'll tell you, everybody and their grandmother has put in evidence. And most of them, they're not, uh, it's not evidence at all or any sort of uh, sensible input on the treatment provision system. It's mostly people saying, I work in King's College. We do lots of valuable work. Um, I think King's College should get more funding for dental research and stuff like that, you know? It's just background, but it's just background chatter. So good luck to the, uh, uh, you know, but the, the dental advisor is someone called Janet Clark. And Janet Clark is, uh, is is very firmly an establishment figure and uh, responsible, really, for the situation. I think she's the deputy chief dental officer. So when Sarah Invisible Hurley goes off to do something new, uh, you can expect Janet Clark to be the chief dental officer. You heard it here first. Hello, hello. That's a big old lorry. Here we go. Ha! That's funny. That car was going to try and slip up the right lane as they normally do. And uh, he got, he's now stuck behind that lorry. So good luck to the lorry. I hope he stays there for ages. But I've a good mind to turn around and go back and stop in front of the lorry. Make sure he can't go anywhere. So, <clears throat> House Select Committee, I would just like to say don't expect anything from the House Select Committee, okay? Because part of, you know, what I was complaining about was the fact that there's a, a problem with um, management. You know, we have like a governance problem in the UK. And... The Health Select Committee is just a link in the in that chain, the governance chain that isn't working. So um, I'll be interested to see what they come out with. 
But no, just quickly, I'll finish up about the doctors. So the doctors, uh, they, they wanted to take her out of hours care away from the doctors. They did it to the dentist about the same time. And um, so what they did was they changed the doctor's contract and made it uh, uh, so the doctors didn't need to do the out of hours con. Yeah, yeah. And so in order to change the contract, they gave them this fantastic new contract. And it was fantastic in two ways. One, it paid them a ton of money. And the other thing was that it gave them office hours, nine to five. And then they had like a third party was subcontracted to do the out of hours. Now, the doctors earned so much, in particular the consultants, that they maxed out their pension contributions. So they got to the point where they said, there's no point, there's absolutely no point us working anymore because I might as well retire and take my pension because if if I work, my pension's not gonna get any bigger. Right? Oh, I know, it's a slot. I'll pay up, it's the pay up lot. So they, all the consultants are retiring because what's the point of them working? If they're not going to get a bigger pension, they might as well just retire and take the pension that they're going to get. So what they've done is they've upped the maximum pension contribution from a million to 10 billion or whatever, you know. They've taken the maximum limit off. So the idea being that they're probably not going to get the consultants to come back, but they might get a few of the consultants who might have left to, to not leave because they've got this... Um, crisis with the uh, with the NHS but the NHS is going online anyway now I think the NHS is going on to 111 certainly if you want an appointment with your uh, doctor or anything or you've got any serious problem instead of going down A&E or going to your surgery you, you just ring 111 and then they arrange for you to have a telephone con consultation and so the NHS for all the billions that are spent on it it's going to become an online service, you know, unless you're literally leaking claret, in which case then uh, it'll probably still be online, but someone will deliver some bandages or something. I don't know. All right, nice to talk to you. See you soon. Bye.